how delicious can I make a Chardonnay? How simple and straightforward and delicious and colorful and inviting and generous. And these are all things I think about. When Dave and I first started working with Chardonnay, I started directing him towards the Chardonnay from the Central Coast. It has a sort of magically controlled environment that has these massive changes in temperature, and but at the same time has this control that is unique. It makes it such a an ideal spot for agriculture. Watching the shadows of the sheep walking is uh, quite amusing. Right down here, when they're walking, they look just like very tall sheep, very tall black sheep. See that dense fog over there? Yeah. That's what the Russian River and the Russian River region is all about, is that there's a gap in the uh, in the mountain range there at Jenner, and it allows the wind and then the fog to come right up that gap. So while we didn't get to go down and see the vineyards in Monterey, uh, we got to see why the coastal influences are so important to, uh, to create those great flavors in Chardonnay grapes. It's hard not to look down when you're approaching the ground in a balloon. Dave knew that oak is used in making Chardonnay, and we started talking about oak. And I thought, what better way to show them about oak than take them down to the cooperage? We went through the whole operation of how they grow the trees in France, how the barrels got put together. The wood is selected by the amount of tannin and by the size of the growth ring of the tree. What affect the, the, the taste, it's the ratio between the spring growth and the summer growth. Okay, that's, yes, depending on the season. Yes. The Give it a try, Dave. Wow. Francis was showing us the different kind of toasts. And the longer you leave it on the fire, a little bit more of the caramelization of the oak, creating more of the sweet vanilla tones. That's a lot of weight. We sort of decided that the aromas that we were getting out of the barrels that we liked the most were the medium toasted barrels. Between acoustic instruments and the barrels, you see the, art, the artistry and the, and the care taken in choosing the wood, and it's really interesting watching, watching you assemble it, and the, you know, it's just the wood. <laughs> Blending wine is very similar to creating music, and when he's creating a song, he might start with, say, a little melody, it's in his head. And then he's going to start layering uh, different things using either different instruments or tones. And that parallel just meshed so well. Let's just make a simple blend right off the bat here. I'm going to have to have some half glasses. Half or something. Exactly. Well, let's do that. In fact, here, you're going to do the blend. It's a really creative and a passionate process for him. And it's also really open. And he, he doesn't have this exclusivity. It's an exchange. It's a, it's a communication. You know, just in, in music, I think also in art, you know, it's like knowing when to stop. You know, knowing when to say, that's, the song is there already. Finding the end point is one of the most critical things. Yeah. And, and being a winemaker, I, refu I, I, I keep the right to uh, change everything up until the point the cork goes in the bottle. I think the number one is the one that we should... Uh, Dreaming tree? Should, should Blend toast number one? To. Yeah. Toast. Cheers. Cheers. The winemakers tend to be people that want to share a glass of wine. They want to make something delicious that everybody can enjoy. Yeah. Justin and Karen Miller, who own Garden Creek Vineyard in the Alexander Valley, and uh, I've known them for a long time, buy grapes from them and so forth. We thought, hey, let's take the Dreaming Tree Chardonnay, and let's take it up and see what other winemakers think about that. <laughs> We've both grown up with our hands and planting a lot of grapevines over our childhoods, and yeah. it felt very natural for us to take what the beauty of this ranch has given us as a couple and yeah we're both big believers in sustainability and the soil and, and you know keeping that going for the long run we talked a lot about sustainability with dave what's what's organic and the the best example that we could show him of that was uh, garden creek yeah, awesome. it's not about fast-paced internet email the simple things in life awesome. life's yeah. too short not to raise a glass of wine with each other and enjoy it. 
Here it is, the Chardonnay, the collaboration between uh, Dave, myself, Tom, and uh, we did the blending this morning. We made some decisions, and... Uh, Wine's an amazing story piece, and it holds itself for so long. It was a pleasure to be able to sit down with the two of them and taste the blends that they've been working on. We'll, we'll change the packaging of the Dreamy. Uh, just a little bit. Right yeah, now, they look kind of like there. cheap whiskey or something. <laughs> Since I came down here, I've, uh, you know, I've had uh, I've had an amazing time at the Millers, and, and they're pr producing incredible wine. They're producing food. They're living a sustainable lifestyle, and I mean, maybe they're sort of, you know, where we should be aiming. Well, cheers! Cheers! Right. Cheers to the Dreaming Tree. Yeah, welcome to Dreaming Tree.